Hey, good people, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Monday, so that means we have our live stream tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern. We'll recap the Raiders game. And we'll be talking about what to look forward to this week as we are literally a week away from cutdowns. We got a lot of guys on this team and this roster that you want to hold on to, but you can't hold on to everybody. In the meantime, it would be nice if the Cowboys could actually get CeeDee Lamb done. And CeeDee Lamb is truly sending a message right now. Um, his Instagram story. And the question is, is what is the message and who is it meant for? In that Instagram story, it's the black and white Spider-Man hat being pulled on. Hmm. I actually have not seen that Spider-Man movie. I hate to go to movie theaters. I just do. I just do. And it's hard for me to sit down and watch a whole lot of TV and stuff because I always feel guilty about there's other things I could be doing. And so I'm constantly, because I know life is short and I don't know how much time I have left, it's hard for me to really just sit down and just watch a movie, you know, over and over, unless it's something that's like, oh, I got to see that. And they've done so many different Spider movies. It's just kind of crazy. So, yeah, I've watched all the Marvel, you know, the whole with, with uh, I, I can't even remember the characters' names. The question is, who is this message sent for? Because the Black Spider-Man, okay, is a little bit moodier, a little more unorthodox, and a scarier figure. Is that for the defenders? Because we've seen C.D. Lamb has put on about 10 pounds of muscle. We saw him with Micah Parsons at the Super Bowl talking about growing up. You know, when you grow up, you know, you become a man, you get your man body. So is he saying to the D-backs and the guys that are gonna have to stop him that he is becoming the black Spider-Man with extra powers? That he is going to be unstoppable or is this a message to Jerry Jones to saying, basically, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of bullshit. I am moodier. I am edgier. And I'm not taking shit any longer. Because here's the thing for me, okay? Here's the thing for me. That really pisses me off, okay? It pisses me off. Now, I get it. Cowboys are trying to run a business here. They're trying to run a business. They do very well with it. Their business gained a half a billion dollars more in value. That's doing some right things. Their business, without investing as much money as other teams has, finds a way to be a playoff team each year. So when you look at that and say, they're not doing anything different than any other company. You don't think that, you know, the, the Elon Musk's and, the, you know, all of those guys that they look out for their employees in their business. No, they try and find ways that they can get the people to do more work for less. And that's where you hear Stephen Jones literally say, you know, if we get this contract done. You know, CD going to have to get about 12 to 15 touches, 12 to 15 touches. A game. Now, I don't know if you guys understand this. 12 to 15 touches equates out, if we just take, say, the 15 touches a game, that equates to about 197 times he would touch the ball. With the average that he was getting in catches, that would be about over 2,500 yards. And here's the thing with the Cowboys. If the Cowboys were doing what they do with taking their time on getting these contracts and you hear Jerry Jones, you know, we, we don't have any set time. If he was here, he'd probably be getting injured in preseason. What? Did he just jinx the whole situation? 
it would be different if by them waiting and doing contracts because they could have done with this thing last year and we could have been, you know, $25 million a year for your wide receiver last year. You understand that, right? You, you could have done Dak Prescott's contract last year and not been sitting here with a $55 million cap hit and had Dak Prescott at like 50, 51 million where he had been the highest paid for five minutes and you wouldn't be worrying about this right now. It would be different if the things that they did paid dividends in getting more money to spend on others. Did the situation with Zach Martin last year, because let me pull up Zach Martin while I'm here. Because let me pull up his contract for a second here. So I'm, I'm curious. So after a training camp holdout, Zach Martin signed a two-year restructured contract with the Cowboys for $36.8 million, fully guaranteed through 2024. He previously was set to earn $13 million. Martin gets a $5.35 million pay raise for 23, while raising his cap number to just seven, uh, $710,000 for the upcoming season. So they got a little cap relief for last year. They had him hold out and got some cap relief. But here's the thing. If he retires next year, they'll end up having his voidable year cap number of $10 million next year. Oh, by the way, his cap number for the other voidable year will be $17 million. So it's conceivable, as we talk about Dak Prescott having like a $40 million dead money hit, that you literally have $27 million in dead money for a player that's not going to be on the roster. So when they ended up having Zeke hold out and saying, Zeke who? And then they finally got the contract done because deadlines make deals get done. Was that a good contract? Did they save some money by doing that? Or did they actually hurt the team because Zeke Elliott wasn't in shape going into the season? I'll take the latter. When they do these things, like Dak Prescott's contract, they could have paid him after year three where he outplayed his rookie contract. Could have easily done that. Could have done it year four when he was up to four million. I mean, excuse me, two million dollars a year, but didn't do it. Instead, they chose to franchise tag him and wait to the last minute to try and do the contract. In which case, they probably tried to stick some shit in it at the last minute. And I think this is the reason why the Cowboys wait to the last minute because they want to stick something in. Because I feel like the Joneses are like some customers I've had. That it doesn't matter what kind of deal you give them, they still want a little bit more. They still want to feel like, yeah, I got a little extra on something. They always try and stick something in the contract that nobody else does. And in the end, guess what? It don't save them any money. It usually costs them Either a player being ready to play, like D-Law, who said, I'm not getting my shoulder operated on until I get my contract. Or Zeke Elliott not being in shape. That every time they wait on these contracts, it ends up being a wasted season. And then we, in turn, all point and say, Psh, Dak Prescott, we can't pay anybody because we paying him and not looking at the totality of all the things that we've done here. Yeah, that's what sucks. And maybe that message is for the Joneses that I'm not in the mood to play with y'all anymore. All right, good people, see you tonight, nine o'clock. Peace out.